Hey everyone, Tin Man here, and the latest Underlord added to Dota Underlords, Jull, has recently been reworked. When Jull was released, I made a guide video, but since his abilities have changed, I decided to take another look at it and make an updated one. This guide will include better examples and more insight from having more experience playing with and against Jull. We'll cover the general strategies of playing him in each of his two different builds, when and why to pick Jull, and of course cover positioning considerations for him. First, let's talk about the general strategy that applies to both builds before diving into the specifics of each. Jull is a tanky upfront Underlord, being the only current melee Underlord choice. His passive ability will also dramatically increase his armor when he's in the thick of battle, making him very hard to kill, especially if your opponent brings lots of units to try to kill him. He'll often be positioned roughly central on the board to maximize the number of units that are adjacent to him. In addition to his passive, his cast ability in both forms will also give him a lot of survivability. Regardless of the build, his ultimate will provide a team-wide bonus that will be more impactful if you still have lots of units alive whenever it's cast. Ideally, Jolt is paired up with builds that have lots of healing, like Warlocks and Healers, to really make use of his, his insanely high armor value, as the healing will be extremely effective on him. He also works well with tanky melee heavy lineups like Scrappies or Warriors, and the 6 Scrappy bonus in particular is great for him for the bonus armor and health regen when he's in the thick of combat. And finally, if you just need another frontliner in your build to hold the enemies in place, like as in the case with Assassin builds, Joel can do that job nicely. He's at his best against opponents who mainly focus on physical damage, like Assassins or Warriors, and preferably against opposing melee units, to maximize the armor gained from his passive. Against ranged heavy teams like Mages or certain builds of Hunters, Joel will lose a lot of his effectiveness as his armor gained from the passive is much less useful. Let's take a look at Joel's aggressive tank build first. This build comes with the Roundhouse ability, which gives Joel a 50% damage reduction, as well as a massive attack speed and lifesteal increase for 5 seconds. This will provide some healing, but that healing will scale up with the damage that he deals during the duration of the buff. Alliances like Trolls can buff up this attack speed even more, while Heartless can make him deal even more damage, so that will convert into more healing. The real appeal of the aggressive tank build, however, is the ultimate Barrels of Fun, which rolls in barrels from the side of the board, rolling down random rows and columns. They will stop at the first unit hit, either buff an ally or damage an enemy. This is a great ability if you have some backline attack damage dealers like Dragon Knight or Hunters who can greatly benefit from the increased attack speed. It's also particularly good if you have the Heartless Alliance as well to increase the physical damage dealt to the opponents. This is a massive bonus in any composition, but it works really well if you have lots of units still alive to ensure that every barrel gets used. For this reason, it's important to have a strong front line to ensure you don't get run over too quickly before this ability is cast. Now when do you want to pick Aggressive Tank Jull? He works well when you have just a few frontliners and he's just one of few that you might have in such a build like Assassins. He doesn't rely nearly as much as healing tank Jull on being adjacent to other allies, so he works well if you're just going to have one or two other guys up front with him. The Barrels of Fun ability is particularly useful if you have the backline damage dealers, as mentioned before, who want attack speed, so think units like Dragon Knight, like Sniper, or other hunters who have high attack damage and just want that attack speed, especially if you already have a solid front line to keep them in alive long enough. And finally, Aggressive Tank Jull is really just a great kind of default Underlord option for any build if you can't find a reason to pick the Anessix or the Hobgen option. Barrels of Fun is always going to be useful for every build, so, and Jull himself is very tanky, so he's always going to be a good safe pick regardless of what you're building. Let's talk a bit about the positioning here. In this example, we have Jull placed on the edge of our formation, closest to the middle. While you often want to surround him with friendly units, you can kind of get away with placing him like this with the aggressive tank version, because if you're stacked up in a corner, enemies will naturally tend to move towards you and likely surround Jull anyway. The Sand King placed just behind him will also tend to move up and cover his right side, while the clockwork on his left will hopefully stay next to him as well to give him the most bonus. Next up, Healing Tank Jull is a more support-focused version, and uh, as his name implies, his To Your Health ability uh, trades in the damage for more healing. You'll still get the damage reduction, the 50% damage reduction for 5 seconds, but also he will heal adjacent allies based on how much damage he takes over the course of that duration. 
Even more so than the aggressive tank build, this version of Joel really wants to be adjacent to as many units as possible to maximize the healing. This makes him even better in melee heavy builds who will stand with him up on the front line. His ultimate ability for this build is Happy Hour, and it pairs nicely with a more healing focused build. For the rest of the fight, all members of your army will take dramatically reduced damage initially, while the rest of the damage they take is dealt over time. This ability does not provide any intrinsic damage reduction, but it's still very useful. Because the damage taken is going to be much smoother, healing effects will have more time to function. No longer will your units get focus fired down before healing has a chance to reach them, they won't get burst by like a sniper assassinate or anything like that, they'll have lots of time to get healed up. It can also make a difference in close end of round fights, where your units will have a bit of a bonus health essentially if the round ends before those 10 seconds of the damage over time is dealt. So healing tank gel should be a high priority for builds that have a lot of built in healing to maximize the benefits of his happy hour buff. He goes particularly well with melee heavy composition so that he can get the most out of the healing, but it also helps to have a few ranged heroes sitting right behind him. So he's probably should not be picked in a hundred percent melee builds. Otherwise you won't have people adjacent to him behind to get that extra healing in most cases. Unlike aggressive tank Joel, whose ultimate is always going to be useful, the happy hour ultimate is not nearly as good if you don't have a reasonable amount of healing on your team, so you tend to avoid him in compositions that you cannot take advantage of this staggered damage effect. When positioning the healing tank Joel, it's much more important to surround him with allies to make the best use of his to your health ability. In this example, we have him flanked by melee units and then three ranged units placed behind him. This will maximize his armor gain and healing, and honestly this positioning could be quite good for the aggressive tank version as well, but it's particularly important with the healing tank gel version. However, this particular formation does leave you quite a bit exposed to opposing assassins who can rip through your backline very quickly, so definitely use caution if there are a lot of opposing assassins in the game. One last positioning note is about how to counter an opposing gel. Since we know he relies on stacked formations and adjacent units, we can exploit that if we know that our opponents are going to be using him. The first thing is to not line up on the front line. By moving back, units will have to walk forward on both sides, introducing some randomness of movement and targeting, and then hopefully preventing the maximum number of adjacencies in the fight. It also forces Joel to move away from any ranged units who may have been stacked up behind him. You can also split your units into different sides of the board to pull some frontliners to each side. This once again forces Joel to lose units who used to be adjacent to him, reducing the impact of his armor passive. And finally, you can try to target him with some powerful abilities and debuffs since he'll be up on the front line and exposed to such things. Ideal effects include Slarder's Corrosive Haze, Desolator, Legion Commander's Duel, or the Brute debuff, especially effective against aggressive tank Joel, who relies on his auto attacks for his healing. Here's an example of this type of positioning in action. Here we use the exact Joel positioning from the earlier example as our opponent, and set our forces back off the front line and roughly split into two groups on each side. Our higher damage side with the Dragon Knight, Legion Commander, and Slarder are slightly towards the Joel side and are lined up in a way to hopefully focus him down. Here's a shot a few seconds into the fight. Notice how Joel had to move forward away from his ranged units who were giving him bonus armor. The Alchemist, who was previously just to the left of Joel, has also been drawn further to the left side by our Chaos Knight group, leaving Joel even more exposed. A lot of our units focused onto him right away, including the Legion Commander, Slarder with his Crows of Haze, and Dragon Knight, meaning that we were able to very quickly burst him down and take him out of the fight. So that does it for this updated Joel guide. I hope you learned a little bit more about playing with and against him. After his rework, I think Joel is a very strong option in a lot of builds, but especially the aggressive tank version, who is a great default pickup for any build. The healing tank version is a bit more niche, but remember that Underlord Choices is always going to be contextual based on your build and the builds of others in the game. Thank you so much to all of my channel members and other supporters. If you like this content and want to help me keep making it, please do consider supporting the channel by clicking the join button down below. You also can get some special perks, including early access to guide videos like this. Special shout out to my Lord tier members, John Vise and Seggy Fault. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time.